working at the May-June 2022 Human and Social Biology Paper 2. It starts off in its very usual way with its customary instructions. Candidates are to do all questions, and the questions are broken up in two sections. Two hours to do each question that gives approximately 20 minutes a question. So let's begin. Question one focuses on section B, life processes, and the topic they are focusing on is the circulatory system. And it reads, figure one shows an image of a blood smear. And we have an image, a blood smear, and they go on to ask you in part A, identify the blood component labeled A and state its function. If we are watching these components, we see most of the image made up of these blank cells. We see a cell like this, and we should be able to identify that if this is a blood smear, it has different components. A, being the smallest of the components, means we are looking at platelets. Platelets we are looking at. Um, this section here, this cell, it's a white blood cell, and it's a lobe nucleus. You can see the lobe nucleus, which means we are talking about a phagocyte. This cell, which takes up the, um, the nucleus containing, uh, taking up the most space, is a lymphocyte. These are the blank cells here that seem kind of hollow in the center. They make up the majority of this blood smear. Well, that should obviously be an indicator that this is red blood cells. And what do platelets do? What do platelets do? Platelets serve the function to help in blood clotting. All right? So when you get injured, when you get a cut, it's platelets, which are also known as thrombocytes, that jump into action to perform the blood clotting activities. So you could put blood clotting in function. Identify the most abundant cell shown in figure one. Well, the most abundant cell. And if you do a simple count, you don't really need to count. It should be kind of obvious. Just looking at it, you will see it as red blood cells. So the most abundant cell is red blood cells. You don't need to write a sentence. They said identify. So just say the three words and move on. State the main function of the cell identified in B1 and give two ways in which it is adapted to its function. The cell identified in B1 is identified as red blood cells. What do they do? They transport gases, right? Carbon dioxide and oxygen. They need, it needs to go to the lungs. Carbon dioxide needs to go to the lungs to be expelled. Oxygen, you need to retrieve it from the lungs to send it around the body. They ask for two adaptations, and there are more than two adaptations. Uh, hemoglobin pigment that gives it its red shape from the ion. They have no nucleus, no nucleus. They're biconcave, right? That donut shape. Remember, they have no nucleus, so they're biconcave. All of this helps in having more hemoglobin in cell, right? Because you want to transport gases with the cell. So it makes sense that this cell does not have a nucleus. And there are other adaptations. You could always let us know in the comments what adaptations you chose to use. But three marks, so don't go overboard and showing off. All that does in the exam is waste time. Table one and table two shows the number of male and females aged 18 to 50, who tested positive for the herpes simplex virus type 2 and the human papilloma virus, HPV, respectively, in a certain country. We have table 1 here and we have table 2. All right, so table 1 is herpes simplex type 2 virus and uh, table 2 is the human papilloma virus. So let's go to the question. From table 1, identify the age group among eight among the males, which had the highest, notice highest in capital letters, they don't want you deviating from this 
incidence of herpes simplex type 2. They tell you go to table 1 for this. And we're looking at table 1. They are asking for males, so we could ignore the females part. And we just look for the highest number. And we say what group is that. So that is age group 18 to 25. So we write that. It's just one mark. And we move on. Explain why a high incidence of herpes simplex type 2 in the age group identified in C1 would be a public health concern. 18 to 25 is a really important class. Eh? It is the class of individuals or uh, young adults, as they properly are, that will be coming in as the working class, the next generation, the generation to take over, where we think of succession planning. This is the age group that you would be interested in. This is also the age group that is most desirable, most attractive, all right? They would be looking for spouses, etc. So they are of great concern. If you have an outbreak in that age group, it means public health need to pay particular attention to that age group. You don't want that age group that long. Based on data in table two, state whether HPV is more prevalent in males and females. And all we have to do is make a simple addition. So when we add up the number of males, 125, 104, 140, and 95, we get about 465. When we add up the females of 160, 115, 160, and 80, we get 515. So which one has the higher group or the higher number? The females. It asks you which one. So it's you, you have two choices, either males or female. So this is literally an example of a 50% question for one mark. Explain how the high prevalence of HPV among males and females can impact the economy of the country. The mere fact that they're talking about economy means they are talking about spending or money. Right, so that means, and it's at country level, so you're talking about the government. The government, so if the government has to spend more money on health sector and its services because the high prevalence of HPV among male and females, that, that's worth it, right? So you would have to spend, and considering that we were in a pandemic. We all know what happens when too many people get sick at the same time. The system, the health system becomes overwhelmed. All right? If the health system becomes overwhelmed, you know it can grind to a halt. Going through being part of COVID-19, we would have all seen this in our lifetime. It also means that other ministries, other aspects of government would have to become involved from national security um, to any other ministries associated with controlling the prevalence of this. Even education, persons would have to uh, improve their education to be able to know what to do, take the necessary precautions, etc. And we saw that with AIDS. AIDS, when it first started off, started off in a drastic way. And as education and everything improved, it had less and less impact. Until now, it's a treatable disease. Not curable, but treatable. And that would give you your 15 marks for your first question. Question two, write a balanced chemical equation for the process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis raises its head in section A, living organisms and the environment. So that's where this question will focus. So we know to tunnel our answers in that specific direction. So the balanced equation would look like this. It's important to acknowledge 
that they asked you to balance the equation. So you have to have the six in front of the carbon dioxide, the six in front of the water, the H2O, and the six in front of the oxygen. This balances it, whereby the reactants equal to the amount of products. The figure two shows a diagram of the carbon cycle. We have the nice sun, it's going into the plant, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere going into the plant. We have a cow. We have a factory or industry of some kind. Going up, we have decomposition, fossils and fossil fuels. So let's go to the question. Identify the processes labeled X, Y, and Z in figure two. So X, if we look at X and we see sunlight going in, we just identified the photosynthetic equation. We see carbon dioxide going into the plant as well. That is photosynthesis. That is photosynthesis, which will make the opposite of that, whereby, look, it's coming out. Why is carbon dioxide going into the atmosphere from the tree? That will make that respiration, respiration. And Z, whereby these chimneys, these smokestacks are putting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, you know that some kind of combustion would have occurred, whereby combustion is the burning of fossil fuel. Three marks. Name one organism which causes decomposition in figure two. There are many organisms that you could have picked from, and we would hope that persons would go with the easiest of answers and just choose bacteria. The residents in a village clear land for agriculture by burning away trees, shrubs, and grass. Discuss how this practice could contribute to global warming. And simply, for these four marks, they are asking you for a flow chart or flow chart of sorts. If you choose to write that in a passage or you choose to write that in a actual flow chart, all is well, all is well. It's just however you choose your style to present. You will still get the necessary marks. Right, so this is what we chose to put. Burning of trees releases stores of carbon into the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas. So that contributes to the greenhouse effect, which increases. Having the greenhouse effect, increasing temperatures increase, which you know is called global warming. Hence we arrive the contribution to global warming forms. Explain one way in which global warming could impact Caribbean territories. And living in the Caribbean, which CXC exam is for, meaning for CXC candidates, you are well aware that many of our territories are islands islands. So as global warming occurs, with ice caps melting, the sea level rises. The sea level rises mean there is reduced land space on an actual island. And you may often hear this referred to as sinking islands. It's not literally sinking, it's the appearance of sinking because the sea level is rising. Suggest three ways in which carbon emissions could be reduced. Suggest three ways in which carbon emissions could be reduced. And there are a multitude of ways. It just depends on where your mind is, what you're thinking about right now. Reduce reliance on fossil fuels. They a whole host of renewable energy sources available that could be used as substitutes. Laws, you could put laws into place to help with the reduction. You could put penalties, policies, 
and he's saying a wrong laws, better use of technological resources. Working from home is better use of technological resources. You can do many of the activities at home on your computer that, that you go to work to do on your computer. All right? So these are the ones we chose. There were many others. You could always let us know if you used others. 15 marks for this question. This was the second question. Let's move on to your third question. Figure three shows four stages of mitosis. And if we're talking about mitosis, mitosis shows up in hereditary and variation. Hereditary and variation, that is section C of the syllabus. And we have four stages that are being identified here. We can see A is metaphase, B is telophase, C is anaphase, and D, prophase. And we could identify these by what is drawn in the diagrams, what's shown in the things. Define the term mitosis. And mitosis is one type of cell division, the other kind that will automatically pop in your mind when you hear mitosis, it kind of goes hand in hand, mitosis, meiosis. All right, so mitosis is a cell division which results in two identical daughter cells. It's two identical daughter cells. Identical, both of them having the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell, as the mother cell. So they are identical. Identify the stage A, B, C, or D in figure three, which shows the telophase. And telophase is B. It is the last phase whereby the division has occurred and the nuclear membrane is reforming for the cells, right? So we see the poles are there. The spindle fibers have disappeared. The spindle fibers, Y, have disappeared. Look, it's, form, it's forming in A and it has been fully formed in C. It has disappeared. The poles have pulled back and the DNA or the chromosomes have been lumped together. So they are not lining up at the equator as in A and, and C. C, they have started to separate. C, they have started to separate. That's why we can identify C as being anaphase. D, these prophase, D, nothing has started as yet except for the poles, the poles are forming and will line up on opposite sides of the cell. They're now starting to line up. So the answer is B. B is the answer. State what type of reproduction takes place in mitosis. State the type of reproduction in which mitosis takes place. Asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction, that's one mark, that's a giveaway mark. State two features of the process of mitosis. For two marks, two marks, um, quite a bit of features that you could choose from. Equal number of chromosomes for the mother and daughter cell. The, it's one nuclear division, no recombination or segregation of chromosomes. So you could choose from, you could choose your answers. And there are others if we go into details about the mitosis, but these are the ones that we chose from and they only asked for two. Figure four shows a comparison of a contraceptive method used and the number of pregnancies in women between the age of 15 and 40, which means they have now veered in to reproduction, which is in section B. So they have merged the questions with two sections of the syllabus. So the section B is now veering in to 
reproduction, particularly the contraceptive, the topic of contraceptives in reproduction. And the bars line up for us, it's sterilization, interuterine device, implant, withdrawal, and the pill. And we have the number of women and the pregnancies that resulted with their use. Identify the contraceptive method, which was the best. The contraceptive method, which resulted in the least number of pregnancies, that means it's worked well. It worked well. And just looking from this, we see that the number of pregnancies for sterilization was none. So there was no pregnancy. So that is the best contraceptive. So our answer here is sterilization. And they go on to ask, explain why this method is the most effective. Sterilization is a surgical method whereby the oviducts are cut and tied. It prevents the passage of the ovum, the egg, into the fallopian tubes and into the uterus eventually. All right, so sperm is unable to meet an egg because no egg passes into and through the fallopian tubes on its way to the uterus. So it's a really good contraceptive. It's obviously performed by a surgeon because it is a surgical procedure. Identify the contraceptive method which resulted in the greatest number of pregnancies and explain why this method is the least effective. And if we just go back to the chart, we're just looking for the highest number of pregnancies, which is withdrawal, which is about just under 90. It's about 85-ish thereabout. So it really wasn't a good method. The withdrawal method that they used, and that wasn't good. That was the least effective method. And many times it's not performed correctly. Sperm has to be prevented from being ejaculated into the vagina at the top of the cervix. And oftentimes this does not happen because sperm can also be present in the pre-ejaculate of men. So it's not an effective method. state which of the other contraceptive methods in figure four was shown to be as effective as the pill. So we have the pill here. Look at it. Look at the stats for the pill. It's about number of women is about 70 and number of pregnancies is just over 30. All right. And we're looking to see that anyone is similar. The similar, the most similar one is the implant. The implant. The implant is a device that releases progestin. It is kind of, it's shaped like a matchstick and it releases this hormone steadily, continually for a significant period of time. It, some brands say they could go as long as three years. Some say uh, 24 months but it depends on the brand, all right? It depends on the brand, and it is inserted just under the skin of the upper arm. So by the tricep, the tricep of the female, the doctor will make an incision and insert it under her skin where it will release progestin for its duration. Suggests two reasons why the degree of effectiveness for the pill, as shown in figure four, is not as high as expected. And that comes in with use. Many times, women can forget to take it. And simply forgetting to take it voids the whole point of the contraceptive. The hormones can affect persons differently which could sometimes force them to have to stop taking it, right? So those are two suggestions why the degree of effectiveness may not be as expected. And this would be 15 marks.
So this was a nice way to combine the topics whereby they combined hereditary and variation with reproduction. So now we move into question four. Distinguish between pandemic and epidemic. And I think everyone should be very, very familiar with this question, considering we were in a pandemic. Pandemic is a global infectious disease. So it's not localized to one specific area. This is a really wide region, considering we were in COVID-19, it was the whole world. So a pandemic affects a really wide area. And if we are talking about diseases, that means we are in disease and their impacts on humans, which is section D in the human and social biology syllabus. An epidemic affects, yes, it affects a region and a large number of people in that region. Example, Ebola. Ebola was an epidemic. It was affecting a specific region. It wasn't traveling the whole world. Right? So this question, I'm considering this is the May-June 2022 paper in the middle of the pandemic, this is not an unreasonable question to get. In fact, this was a highly anticipated question. Table three shows selected drugs and their classification. Complete table three by inserting a missing drug or its classification. The first row has been completed for you. So they gave you an example of how to do it. So we have cocaine and it's classified as a stimulant. Now they leave a blank and they ask you to provide a sedative. And you could have chosen any sedative you want. And I think many persons do know of sedatives, morphine, oxycodone, tramadol. Any of them would satisfy. You only need to give one answer. Heroin, they ask you, what is the classification of heroin? And I hope persons know that heroin is a depressor. Figure five is a graph which shows trends observed in the smoking of cigarettes and the just of vaping among secondary school students in a certain country. State one healthy trend and one unhealthy trend that can be observed from the graph in figure five. Well, you see cigarettes going down, that's a good thing. So that's a healthy trend, but vaping going up, vaping drum up drastically in a short space of time. That means it was height in society and which caused it to go up very, very quickly. In a matter of about three years, it jump up to about 26%. So you could just identify which one is your healthy and which one is your unhealthy. And write them there, two marks, one mark for each, one mark for the healthy and one mark for the unhealthy trend. Nicotine impairs brain development, resulting in a lack of focus and poor judgment. Explain one social impact and economic impact that could result from the unhealthy trend observed in figure five. This is it. Nicotine from cigarettes went down, but the nicotine from vaping went up. Explain one social. So a social talks about society, people, or people interaction. And economic talks about money. So you could class them and they give you quite a bit of space to write. Eh? Two marks for each one because they ask you to explain. So socially, nicotine is addictive. And it's often said to be a gateway drug. A gateway meaning it leads you to do other damaging drugs. So that's a bad thing. So that's a social impact. Economically, so smoking has chronic effects like lung cancer. Lung cancer 
costs money. When you go to public health, if public health is free, it costs money. It means the government, the taxpayers are paying for the treatment of that person. In private health, it means a private citizen is paying for treatment of lung cancer, which smoking does cause. Studies have shown that vaping leads to an increased number of bacteria on the teeth, suggested dental problems that person who vape are most likely to develop. Explain your answer. So two parts, well, well, one part with an explanation. So two parts, suggest the dental problems or dental problems. We pick tooth decay, cavities, gum disease, and we kind of pick it in order for a reason for the explanation. When you have tooth decay, you get cavities, which also lead to gum disease. There are numerous pockets and crevices in the mouth. The mouth is not a flat, smooth surface. So there's plenty for bacteria to hide and get into and stay and make their home. So it leads to actual real problems. That's why so many drug users, including cigarette smokers, have poor health hygiene. Likewise, vaping with its nicotine contributes to poor oral hygiene. Stay two other negative health effects that could result from the practice of vaping. And I hope anytime persons are thinking about smoking, that you would think about cancers. Other, they are said, other than dental, eh? they, you should think cancer, you should think throat cancer, you should think lung cancer, you should think a lot of cancers. Heart disease, heart disease, infertility, even something as simple as asthma, and be caused, amplified by vaping. And that would be 15 marks for this fourth question. The fifth question is the first question in section B. And the question is taken from the impact of health practices on the environment. And in this question, they ask you for plenty definitions. They start you off with asking you for a brief description or if you could define it, if you will, to get this one mark, each one being just one mark. So don't write a book, just give a brief description, which could be simply a definition for one mark. So evaporation, evaporation, you know H2 is changing from liquid to gas. That will get you one mark. Condensation is the opposite of the evaporation. The H2, the water, is changing from gas to liquid. You could even go on to say more, but remember, it's only one mark. So you don't want to waste time writing too much when you have already obtained the mark. You could even go on to say that when gas particles have accumulated on a certain amount, it increases the rate at which condensation happens, and that moves us into precipitation. All right? And it means the state moves from in the atmosphere to the ground level. And we have given you some examples of them, which you are very familiar with. Hail, rain, snow, it brings it downwards. All these are types of precipitation. Filtration, filtration is screening particles by size. So you need something to uh, cause the screening process. Normally it uh, could be a wire mesh, it could be filter paper. All of it screens particles by size. These particles that are smaller than the screen will be allowed to pass through. The particles that are bigger than the screen will not be allowed to pass through. We have a little paragraph here to read. Lana lives in a village near an airport. Although each house in the village has its own septic tank, 
water from pipes and washing machines flows freely into the gutters of the roads. After heavy rains, the water by the beach near to the village becomes cloudy. The sanitation service collects garbage once every three weeks, which results in the accumulation of large piles of garbage bags between collection dates. Define the term pollution. And pollution can only be done by humans. The dog, if the dog rips up the garbage, the dog is not polluting. You, the human, put the garbage out there for the dog to rip up. So pollution is only done by humans, and it is the addition of some substance or material to the environment which causes it. Um, simple definition for two months. List three types of pollution that Lana's village experiences and state one likely impact of each type of pollution. And if you read the passage, when you're reading the passage, just underline the different things that can cause pollution. So we have identified them for you. Water pollution, we know the water ways lead to flooding when they become cloud. Land pollution, the impact of breeding vectors like rats, mosquitoes, because they said that the garbage piles up between collection dates. Noise pollution, the villages near an airport. Airports are for planes. Air pollution, planes again, the exhaust that could lead to respiratory problems. And the beach, becomes cloudy. The beach is becoming cloudy because of sediment. So sediment pollution is included here and that has decreased the aesthetic value of the beach. So that's an impact. That's an impact that is experienced. Suggests three ways in which the residents in Lana's village could reduce the negative impacts of the pollution. So garbage collection needs to be improved. The sanitation uh, company, sanitation workers, uh, collecting this garbage on a more regular basis will improve it. It will remove the large collection of garbage bags that happens uh, between the time they presently are taken to collect. So once you improve that, that pollution problem will be resolved. A wastewater treatment plan, because as it says, the water from the washing machine is running straight into the waterways, all right? The river and beach needs to be dredged. It has a lot of sediment that is being built up in it, which is the reason why it becomes cloud. So once that happens, it will improve significantly. The, the beach will improve significantly. The aesthetic value will return. And that would give you an easy 15 marks. And for our final question, question six, it is taken from coordination and control, which comes from section B of the syllabus, life processes. Life processes. And you have figure six shows an internal view of the human brain, the cerebrum, A and B. And then they ask you, to so identify the structures labeled A and B and state one function of each. And the structures labeled A and B, if we are watching where A, and I hope persons aren't mixing this up for the pituitary gland, which is lower down, look, it's dangling right here. So as it stands, A is the hypothalamus and, and B is the cerebellum, All right? So A is the hypothalamus and B is the cerebellum. We have the functions associated. Hypothalamus does control and the cerebellum does posture balance, things associated with movement. State one example of a spinal reflex. 
and one example of a cranial reflex. Spinal reflex happens on your body. A cranial reflex happens on your head. Anything happening on your head, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, that will be a cranial reflex. Everything from your neck downwards, your arms, your legs, your torso, that's your body, that's your cranial reflex. So for spinal reflex, we have chosen withdrawal of hand. So like an accidental touch, if you accidentally touch a flame, you accidentally touch a hot pot, that's a spinal reflex. The knee jerk is a very popular one. Many candidates would have chosen knee jerk. The cranial reflex, we chose blinking or pupil size change. Blinking was a very popular one. Pupil size change, your pupil and change sizes based on light happens automatically. These are the two reflexes we chose. You could let us know which reflex you would have chosen for your examples. Frank awoke from a three-month coma and must now learn to walk again. Explain the process that must occur in his nervous system to enable him to take a step. Now, walking is not an automatic thing. He, it says he will learn it again, so he's learning it for a second time, which means it's an intentional thing. So it is not a reflex. So we just outline it in a simple flowchart-like response for you. So he is using his eyes, which would provide his coordination. All right, so his eyes, which are also sensory, sends information to the brain. His impulse would go to his motor neurons, effector, muscles, and we know those muscles would contract and relax. And we are talking particularly his leg muscles and his response will that now that the muscles are contracting and relaxing, he's able to take a step. And he will take, he will repeat this over and over and over to be able to take multiple steps. And taking multiple steps is known as walking. And it gave you quite a bit of space to expand on your explanation because we know that this part would be hard to write in such a concise way. So you have a lot of space to get your four marks, five marks. Identify the neurotransmitter that is associated with the process in C1 and describe how the signal will move from one neuron to another. And the neurotransmitter, acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is one of the neurotransmitters. There are many others, but this is the one you are interested in. It moves as it, the impulse passes, the membrane that contains this acetylcholine will move to the synapse. The synapse is the gap between the ends of the neurons. As the fuses with the synapse, the acetyl will pass through the gap, depolarizing on the next neuron. It depolarizes forward. Once that has happened, an enzyme breaks down the neurotransmitter, leading to the repolarization of the neuron. Remember, the membrane containing the acetylcholine moves forward. So on the back end, the repolarization happens. Hence, the impulse is seen to be moving forward. And four marks. So do let us know if you would have used different examples, but this would bring an end to the May-June 2022 Human and Social Biology paper. Do remember to subscribe to encourage us to release more exam papers.